Hello everyone, my name is Lou Del Monte. Welcome to Del Monte on Science. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Big Bang Theory. And most of what I'm going to cover today is also covered in my new book, Unraveling the Universe's Mysteries. It's available at Amazon.com in both a Kindle and paperback version. So without further to do, let's talk about the Big Bang and let's talk about what that theory is and some of the problems with the theory. Even though today the Big Bang is considered uh, by, by most of the scientific community uh, the most valid theory of the, uh, the evolution of the universe. So what is the Big Bang? If you will, uh, the Big Bang Theory holds that in the past there was a region, a highly dense region of energy, infinitely dense energy. And the size of this region is often thought to be very small. So what we're dealing with is a region that's infinitely dense energy and infinitely small. And the Big Bang Theory postulates, or hypothesizes, that there was a dilution, an inflation, and this is a hyperinflation, where this began to expand. The energy itself began to expand. And that's a form of dilution. And, and initially, this expansion was exponential. That means very fast. And, and just to depict that, if it was a linear expansion, it would look like this. Exponential expansion would be like that. And then at some point after this exponential expansion, the expansion from this point on became slower, more. Uh, it actually slowed down. It was no longer exponential or inflationary, as they say but it began to slow down to a more normal rate. Now, where did all this thinking come from? Why, why is this the case? Uh, and, and essentially, before I go there, let me just say that as the energy began to, to expand out, eventually uh, it formed all the, uh, the, the observable universe. And so the Big Bang gave birth to the universe, and it explains the evolution of the universe. Now, before this, and up until about 1924, scientists believed that the universe was eternal and static, which meant it always was and always will be. And on top of that, because telescopes weren't very good, they believed that the entire universe consisted of only the Milky Way galaxy. That was the whole universe. Okay? And when they saw other universes in their telescope and the faint light of those other universes, uh, they called them nebula. They couldn't really distinguish that it was a different a different galaxy. So, and I said other universes, I should have said other, other galaxies. But basically, to up until 1924, including the great Albert Einstein, uh, believed that the universe was static and eternal. And when Einstein developed his general theory of relativity, it actually predicted, the general theory of relativity predicted that the universe was either contracting or expanding. And his, his paradigm, his belief, that the universe was eternal, static, that always was, always will be, so it's static, it's not changing, uh, was so strong that he developed an arbitrary term he called the cosmological constant, which he added to his equations, which caused then the equations to predict a static universe. However, what happened in 1924? That's the first important date. Okay. Edwin Hubble came along 
And he found, now we're talking 1924, he found existence of another galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy. And all of a sudden, the whole world woke up to uh, the, the realization that the universe was much vaster than what, what was previously thought. As a matter of fact, today we know it consists of billions of galaxies. That still, in and of itself, didn't change the eternal universe theory. That didn't happen until 1929, again by Edward Hubble. And how was Hubble able to do this? Well, he was using a new telescope that had just been developed called the Hooker Telescope. And it was a 100-inch diameter telescope, and it was the largest in the world at its time. So he was able to determine that there was a sister galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, and in 1929, he discovered that the other galaxies were actually moving away from us. Okay, so that discovery said, well, the, the universe is not static. It's not, it's moving, it's changing. And a, a Belgium, um, priest actually came along. He was also a uh, physicist, George Lamatra, and that's spelled L-E-M-A-I-T-R-E, Lamatra. And basically he's a Belgian uh, priest and he said, well, if I look at all these ex elements that are moving away, and I would to draw a path of where they came from, where they came from, I would come back to a single energy point. He called that a prime evil atom. And that was the initial concept of that. We started at, at a highly dense energy point called the prime evil atom. Now, who coined the Big Bang term? Well, it was not, a, this, this concept of the universe was not adopted by everyone. And one of the great opponents of it was Fred Hoyle, who said in a very derogatory way, uh, the universe didn't come from a Big Bang. Much to his surprise and everyone else's surprise, uh, the term caught on. Actually though, there was no bang, and it wasn't big, it was infinitesimally small. Now, there's a lot of evidence that supports the Big Bang as a, a legitimate theory of science and evolution of the universe. It's not the only one. But there are several problems. The first problem is it does not, and this is the biggest problem in all of science, it does not explain the origin doesn't explain the origin of the Big Bang. And that's arguably the biggest problem in science today. Secondly, it doesn't explain missing antimatter. When the energy expanded from the Big Bang, we had both matter and antimatter. What happened to all the antimatter? So that's another mystery. And third, the early inflation. It does not explain the early inflation of energy. So those are three, three problems. Number one, the origin. Number two, the missing antimatter. And number three, the inflation. And that will be covering these items, starting with the origin, in our very next uh, posting. And that's going to deal with a phenomena that we have seen in the laboratory uh, dealing with virtual particles. Thank you.